Who will lead the NFL in rushing yards? Christian McCaffrey is in the a leading in the NFC. Raheem Mostert leading in the AFC. Probably not a total coincidence. Coincidence that both guys in the Kyle Shanahan running scheme, right? It's, like that's it's gonna probably. Be <laughs> I think it's McCaffrey for two reasons. One, the system that's part of it. That's the, this the offense they run. They run everything through him. And two, what they're paying him. Like they yeah. took him on. They're gonna be. They're paying him a lot of money. Like I think you want to get as many touches as you possibly can. And he might be the MVP, or at least should be up for it. So the offensive player right here. Well, now what would be? I think it would be interesting is if we don't have a clear cut MVP, and I think Jalen Hurts is like yes. probably gonna get it because a combination of last year and this year. But like, BS. what if it? Well, what if we get to the end of the year and there's no clear cut quarterback who's MVP, and you have, and Tyree Hill and Chris McCaffrey are both like worthy of the offensive player of the year? You might just give one yeah. of them an MVP, and you get Chris McCaffrey accepting it. With I would say AJ back. Brown should be in a conversation. Yeah, as well too. Yeah, that's Absolutely. a good point. But, but imagine, um, like on stage, how that looks at the NFL awards, you know, McCaffrey accepting it, Olivia Culpo, you know, right next to him and all that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the time uh, Aaron Rodgers won MVP cool. and we were backstage um, doing uh, like reporting, being journalist and, uh, you know, t- writing stories about the awards at the NFL honors and taking photographs and all that. And Olivia Munn was back there with Aaron Rodgers. It was very like, oh, oh, hey, hey. She's hot stuff back then, man. You're like this. You're like, oh, hey, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a good, funny Shane Gillis bit about that too. He's like, yeah, see here, there's an old lefty yeah. steps to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. You, uh, That's a good one. I watched it the other day. It's hilarious. We tried to make my dad watch it. He's like, no, I'm good now. I'm like, oh, I forgot about that part. Um, Flipping the defense, Deron Bland already set the record for most pick sixes in the season. Shout out Cowboys defensive fantasy. Will he finish with the most interceptions in the league? He has seven. Gino Stone with six. Paulson Adebo has four, along with Jesse Bates, who uh, had a a pick six on Sunday. Cam Taylor, Jordan Whitehead, also with four. Does Deron Bland win the interception crown? Uh, Yes. He's going to win it. It's not even close. He's going to win it because... (laughs) In part, not only their defense and their pass rush, forcing the ball out, but their offense can get up on teams. Right. Yeah, right. So those are from behind, throwing balls, you know, maybe his way. The only problem is, is like you get a little concerned now, like our team's going to stop throwing at him because he's been so good. If he oh, is going to throw at Gilmore, like, they tried like, that on Sunday. It didn't, it didn't work on Thursday when they tried. How do you throw it either? You just look for another match. <laughs> else you know, you're going to Jordan right? Lewis like, in the slot, which the Seahawks need to do on yeah. uh, tomorrow. But like several of the several of the interceptions, I noticed I really do have the Cowboys defense in like fantasy in a ton of leagues, and like several of these picks of the Panthers pick, the um and the and the Commanders pick, it was like the game was over. It was already over. <laughs> it was over junk yardage. He and like they're just you know the quarterbacks not even thinking he's just getting it out quick and he's just squatting on these routes and housing yep. it. Yeah. Well, I, I, that's the thing to Brady's point, right? When you have the Cowboys offense and, and they've been unbeatable at home, so it should be an interesting game tomorrow. When you're up by 20 something points, we as defensive linemen, we're putting our ears back. So, like, the corners are going to be a little bit more aggressive. They usually teach you to, to play a little bit soft in coverage. But if you, the Cowboys play a lot of man coverage, but if they're playing two man where they got help over the top, those corners can sit on everything, Will. So, that's exactly what happened in the Commanders game. I mean, Sam Howell was a little late on the outbreaking rate route. And Brady, you know this. If you're late on outbreaking routes, the ball's going the other way, especially if Deron Bland's over there. So, I think he, I think Geno Stone is a sneaky one. Um, he's been a ball yeah. hawk at the safety position. Same thing with the, the Baltimore Ravens, right? They're usually either up or they're in close games. And the way that they schematically do things with Mike McDonald, like he can fool you back there, right? And Geno Stone has just been the perfect piece for them. Um, Kyle Hamilton's kind of really solidified that nickel spot for them. But Geno Stone has been their ball hawk in that in that secondary. Yeah, it's I was trying to look to see harder to work away from at times, right? Because of the yep. way they can move around and, and the different things they can do. I was trying to look to see where uh, Deron Bland would rank on receiving yards in the, in the league. By the way, right I'll now. say this: we haven't talked because we didn't do a show last week. That was like one of the most exciting things that I've watched uh, on Thanksgiving. Oh. Like I was, I was rooting for him. Like as soon as it happened, I was like, "Yes, yes!" I was like, "Go, yeah, yeah. go!" And that was amazing by Jim Nance. Hell of a call. Nance had, Nance had that. Call. He's like, "History's yeah. made." I, well, that's and I was looking at everyone's like, "What are you cheering about?" I, I, like, do you have, like money on the, the Cowboys. Like, that's no, literally like, history. Like, You're yeah. never going to see that probably in our lifetime. Like that's going to be again. so hard to see someone replicate that 
Yes. And let's just, just turns into flag football. Like that's, and, that's and, what it And what made it so great is he had to make two guys miss. It wasn't just like it was open yeah. field. Like he had to make a receiver two, and the quarterback. Like yeah, yeah. They had to have like a nice on. return. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they should they should utilize him like on the offense, honestly. Like he's got moves. Yeah. Get the ball in his hands. All right. Speaking it's of offense, Brinson. let's talk about he's got moves. <laughs> he's got Brinson, Colin. He's got moves. Um back on offense, receiving yards. Lots of players Ooh. vying for the title in the AFC. Of course, Tyreek Hill 1324 behind him, Keenan Allen at 11 at 17. And then the AFC NFC side of things, excuse me, you have CD Lamb at 1066, AJ Brown at 1050, and DJ Moore at 1003. Amon St. Brown hanging around there at 993. Um, Stefan Diggs probably too far back to make a run on on Tyree Kill there. I mean, pretty sure it's going to be Tyree Kill, but he's been a little dinged up. I could. Guess you could make a case. He still for, plays every week. Yeah, <laughs> he's 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 like low key way tougher than like you would. Like, I mean, oh, he, he, he just looks like stop. a running back. Yeah, um, I would go with uh, CD and Tyreek if I were picking him, only because. Um, yeah, but Tyreek's gonna win it. I mean, no, no, no I mean, I, yeah, I, I was picking AFC and NFC, but yeah, Tyreek's gonna yeah, win. Yeah, no, not bang for your buck, putting yeah, a little bit on CD. Well, you got to well, look at it. Uh, people were talking about the Seahawks schedule. The Cow- Have you guys looked at this Cowboys schedule going down the stretch? Probably, but it's, I forgot. They got the Eagles, Bills, Seahawks, um, and the Lions still. Mm. Yeah, it's for Gauntlet. <laughs> but, but, but that also means that, like, they're going to be throwing up the ball a bunch in theory. Have, oh, and, and the Miami Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. But those, <laughs> but the Dolphins, the Dolphins, and the Bills defenses, and the Lions defenses, like the Cowboys are going to win some people some fantasy leagues with fifteen weeks, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Bills, Dolphins, and Lions. Those are scoring teams. They're, they're like those yeah. teams will score on you, and you're going to have to score on them. So uh, I, th- I see all those are big time I wouldn't play the Cowboys defense against the, that gauntlet, though. I know. I get the Cowboys <laughs> defense, of course. Well, I mean, Deron Bland. They're hard to say. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think uh, I think C.D. Lambs is, uh, could potentially catch Terry kill, but unlikely with the, the lead he's got. Um, and they got the commanders and the Titans in the, the next two I, weeks, which could be, well, big. I'll say this, could, right? Cause AJ Brown, this they, go ahead. Who, who's more likely to sit out week 18. Ooh. AJ. Yeah, exactly. Be the difference. And it's probably the dolphins. I'd say at least the way that division's shaking out. Yeah. Cause if they run away well, with it, there's no need to play. And the well, Dallas Cowboys, they're buying for the number one seed. There's a reason to play though. Yeah. I, I I know they're tied record wise. I just I have a hard time believing like they're going to end up being the team vying for. It. I feel like Jacksonville, KC, probably have a better chance of that. But I mean, look, maybe we'll see. But I, I think Dallas is the one that, if you look at their division, it's be hard to win it with Philly's lead right now. Yeah, it's I, tough, especially with I, their schedule coming up yeah. too. So I, well, I think, so, so I think Philly's Philly's likely to sit, sit guys in Week 18, especially with Hurts being banged up. And you know they saw like they they would have loved to do it last year. They couldn't. AJ Brown, so he he's probably sitting. And then if you watch what Miami's done, they've been really cautious about pulling guys out, sitting Devin yeah. at at HN. Um, you know Jalen Phillips gets hurt, so now you you really want to be cautious about that. So would not be surprised at all if they were if they sat guys in week if if they were clinched the two three. Or if they were locked into the three or four spot, and it didn't matter whether they were going to be three or four, maybe they consider doing it. Because at that point, you really have to host, you have to get to the the championship game to to, host, to even get a right. If you're the three seed, three versus four seed, God, is, I love is, when you do that. <laughs> I love when you think out loud on the podcast. We go this down this wormhole. Wait, wait, three, oh, who's, who's it three <laughs> to four? Uh, uh, no, I, I think ultimately. Like the only things you can guarantee yourself of is like who's the best position to win your division. Yeah, yeah. Probably. My I'm opinion. just. I'm saying that like if you, yeah, if you, if you're the one seed that's huge because you have home field advantage throughout the playoffs to get a buy. Obviously, the two seed is huge too because you are going to have home field advantage except for the conference championship game. But the three versus the four is 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 not is not negligible, negligible. but it is. It's negligible. Is it negligible? It would depend on a matchup in that case. Here's the other thing: is the personality of the head coaches. Yeah. Is Mike McCarthy going to sit those players if they are in that scenario you're talking about? Or has he been yeah. more apt to play guys in the past? The same thing I think with Mike he plays McCarthy, guys. Obviously, a little different situation. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think McCarthy plays them typically more often. Yeah. And he does. You know, Mike McDaniel, I don't know if you would. I mean, would you really risk Tua going out there, giving up? No. You know, or, or Tyreek Hill. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, unless, unless Tyreek was like going for so, – unless he was going for the receiving record, then you yeah. might roll or him Or like there. he had a chance at 2,000. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. Um, sacks. 
sack, 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 sack. We know who it's going to be. Who are you going to say? I'm going to say Miles. I mean, Miles Garrett does have the shoulder, but I still think it's going to be Miles Garrett. up right now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I might say TJ Watt because, they're. I mean, really? he's already up there above him. Yeah. I mean, I'll I throw know. out Micah Parsons for the same reasons I mean, we said Deron Bland's getting thrown on. He's going to see a lot of dropbacks with this, you know, in, in these shootouts. He's, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, I will say this. We talked about comeback player of the year. Khalil Mack should be in that list, too. Mm, that's a good look. I like that. Kayvon Thibodeau coming on like team this year, Brady. <laughs> yeah, six, so and one, six and one game. Josh, there. Allen, Josh Allen's an interesting one because when they come, they come in bunches. And that's yeah, a team. If you look the schedule the rest balling. of the way, yeah. they could be up on some teams and he'd be balling. And I don't know. He, he gets Will Levis again. So that's like five more. Um, oh, <laughs> come on. That's not nice. Sure, but they, got, like, oh, they, they also, but they also got the Ravens and Browns and they're going to run the football. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're um, down, right. though, can you? You know, I don't think the, well, they play at the Ravens. I don't think the Ravens will be down that game. Who's going to lead the league in force fumbles? <laughs> I have no idea. Whoever leads the no league idea. in sacks. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if Harry. I don't know if Harry has the. Oh, good. Harry's the man. He's got it up. Trent McDuffie with five. But I, Bradley that's, Chubb. See, that's, Bradley, well, that's saying something for a DB to be leading the league in force fumbles. Yeah. I'll shout, out to Brad- a lot. shout out to Bradley Chubb having a great year. Let me let me make a play for Josh Metellus. He's not on this. He should be. I feel like he makes me. Oh, he, he, he is balling. He, he made someone from the Bears fumble. Like, if he has three so far, he basically had all three of those this past Monday night. Because, like, every single <laughs> yeah. time he was on the football, he was knocking it out. He was. Bradley Chubb having a really good year, by the way. Yeah, he is. He's bounced back nicely. Yeah, he has. Come back. Maybe he's come back player of the year. 